This lesson deals with biasing JFETs and MOSFETs. You can find these notes in the ECE302 ebook in Chapter 4, starting on page 31. In this section, we're looking at biasing the FETs to put them in their active region, which we call the saturation region. Here's a graph of I sub D versus VGS, but you have to realize when you pick a box of transistors that they're not all going to be the same. In fact, there'll be some maximum IDSS and some minimum IDSS and a maximum pinch-off voltage and a minimum pinch-off voltage. Here's a curve representing a span of worst-case conditions for a large sampling of transistors. If we were to apply a voltage across the gate to source, I'll call it V sub GSQ. It'll be our operating point or Q point, just like the BJTs. That's going to put a fixed voltage across the gate source. And that means that our value of I sub D at this operating point could be as high as this or as low as this. We'll see later that the value of I sub D determines the gain of an amplifier. Having this much variation really wouldn't be very desirable. What we're going to do is put some feedback in and lower the variation in I sub D. Let's add a resistor here and here and let's do some calculations. The current I sub D flows and goes through here. Let's assume that this diode is reverse biased and so that the current in here is very small. The current that flows in here is going to be I sub D and the drop will be I sub D times R sub S and then the drop across here with this direction of current would be I sub G times R sub G. If we take this node voltage here and subtract this node voltage, this node voltage is minus I sub G times R sub G, and this node voltage is R sub S times I sub D, but I sub G is basically zero. The value is minus R sub S times I sub D. If I sub D is a positive number, the gate source is negative. And that's exactly what we want for biasing. We're going to be somewhere between zero and a negative voltage. Let's take our curve of I sub D versus VGS with our maximum and our minimum. And let's put another equation on this graph that also has I sub D and VGS in it, which was our biasing conditions on the previous page. We showed that the gate source voltage was minus R sub S times I sub D. That's a straight line passing through the origin with a negative slope whose value is 1 over R sub S. You can see that it runs into these curves at a lower point, but also with less variation. Our maximum and our minimum value of I sub D at the Q point is not varying as much, and this will give us a more stable amplifier if we're building large numbers of these. Let's do a simple design example. Suppose I have a JFET that has an IDSS of 4 milliamps, a pinch off of minus 2, and we have a 20 volt power supply. And suppose that R sub D is 2.2K. Let's pick the operating point to be in the middle of the curve. In other words, the highest curve is 4 milliamps, the lowest is 0. Let's put it right in the middle of 2 milliamps. If I do that, could you solve for the resistor R sub S on the previous page? I want to assume saturation because to be an amplifier, we would need to be in the active region. That's the only place where you could get a amplification to occur, and we'll see this in the next chapter. There's also another resistor R sub G in the previous page. Since the current going through it is zero, it would seem that we don't need it. Well, reality is we need some resistance there to let a current leak through. That is the reverse bias current of a diode. But also, this will be the input resistance of our amplifier. So we need to have a very big resistor there. If you recall in ECE203, we talked about picking resistors. And the largest resistor we wanted to pick was something in the mega ohm range or smaller. And the reason for this is that resistors generate noise. We'll look at this in a future course. So if you stay below a mega ohm or stay in the low mega ohm range, the noise generated by the resistors in your circuit will be less than the noise generated by the semiconductors. And we need to know the value of K to do our saturation equations. That's going to be I sub DSS over the pinch off squared. That's 4 milliamps divided by minus 2 squared, which is 1 milliamp per volt squared. Our value of I sub DQ is K times the quantity of the gate source voltage minus the pinch off squared. K was 1 milliamp per volt squared. Pinch off was minus 2, and we're going to set that equal to 2 milliamps. I have one equation and one unknown, and so I can solve for the gate source voltage. Let's divide by 1 milli, get 2, and take the square root of both sides of the equation of a plus and minus root, and then over here I just would have the quantity square rooted, which would be the gate source voltage plus 2. The gate source voltage then is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. That gives me a minus 0.586 and a minus 3.414. Now, there will always be two solutions because we're solving a squared equation, but these circuits have a unique answer, so one of these must be inconsistent. To be in saturation, the gate source voltage needs to be greater than or equal to pinch off, which is minus 2, and that's this solution. This would have put us in the cutoff. Our value of the gate source voltage is a minus 0.586 volts. We had the equation of our biasing that the gate source voltage was equal to minus I sub D times R sub S, so we can solve for R sub S with that equation. 
our gate source voltage is a minus 0.586 that cancels the other minus sign. So I've got a plus 0.586 divided by 2 milliamps, and that's 293 ohms. In our parts cabinet and lab, the nearest value of the 293 is 270. There is a 300 ohm resistor that you could buy, but in that particular parts cabinet, their next value, I think, is 330. But whatever, if we build our circuits, we're going to measure the resistance, and it'll be somewhere in that neighborhood. And let's verify that that is indeed going to give us the proper biasing point. Let's analyze this previous example. We've got a 1 mega ohm resistor, a 270 ohm resistor, and a 2.2K resistor, and a 20 volt power supply. Our current saturation equation is I sub DQ is equal to K times the quantity of the gate source voltage minus the pinch off squared. This was 1 milliamp per volt squared. This was minus 2. I have one equation and two unknowns. My second equation is that the gate source voltage is minus I sub D times R sub S. And now I have two equations and two unknowns. I could solve for the current or the voltage. Usually solving for the voltage is easier because it's not a real small number, but you could do either one. I sub D is equal to the gate source voltage divided by a minus 270, and I'll set that equal to the value of I sub D. Divide by 1 milli, and I get a minus 3.7 on the left-hand side of the equation. And now I'm going to square this, which is going to give me the gate source squared, the inner product times 2, so 4, and then 2 squared. I'll bring this on the other side of the equation. I have 4 plus 3.7, so I have the gate source voltage squared plus 7.7 .7 times the gate source voltage plus 4 equaling 0. Here we've got a squared equation in the gate source voltage, and that looks like something we had in algebra where we had a times x squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. The roots of this equation are going to be minus b minus 0.7.7 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 7.7 .7 squared, times 4 times a times c. Here's 4, here's a times c, and divided by 2 times a. I get two roots, minus 0 0.560 and minus 7.14. And again, this would put us in the cutoff, and so this will be our value of the gate source voltage. Pretty close to what we had solved for before, but now we're using the nearest standard resistor value. Being saturation, we also need to have that the gate to drain is less than or equal to pinch off. So we need to go solve for the gate to drain voltage. The gate voltage is basically zero. We've got a real tiny current flowing through a one mega ohm resistor. But what's the drain voltage equal to? Let's go back to the previous page. Here's the drain voltage. Go around the loop from here back to ground. We're going to see a minus I sub D times 2.2K plus 20. And that's this equation right here. Is that less than or equal to the pinch off voltage? Well, let's solve for it. What's the value of I sub DQ? Well, it's around 2 milliamps, but because we've changed the resistor, the gate source voltage has shifted a little bit. It's minus 0.56 now. Pinch off is minus 2, and K was 1 milliamp per volt squared. Solving this, I get 2.07 milliamps, so pretty close to what I was shooting for. The gate to drain voltage is going to be equal to a minus a minus I sub D times 2.2K, 2.07 milli times 2.2K, and then a minus 20 turns out to be minus 15.45 volts. Pinch off was minus 2, so yeah, it is less than minus 2 volts. The gate source is greater than pinch off, and the gate to drain is less than pinch off, so we are in saturation. Let's take a look at what's called a fixed plus self-biasing circuit, which is very much like our BJT biasing circuit. Let's thevenize this part of the circuit. I'll have an open circuit voltage, I'll call that V sub G. That's going to be a voltage divider with VDD and R2 over R1 plus R2. And if you were to set VDD equal to zero and look back, you would see R1 in parallel with R2. I'll represent this as a voltage source and a series resistance. The rise in voltage is V sub G. There's no current coming in here to speak of, so I've got zero times R sub G plus the gate source voltage plus the drain current going in here times R sub S. This is going to be equal to the gate source voltage plus R sub S times I sub D. Our plot's got I sub D on the y-axis and VGS on the x-axis, so let's solve this equation for I sub D. I sub D is going to be equal to V sub G minus V sub GS divided by R sub S. Now let's plot this on our max and minimum I sub D versus VGS. When the gate source voltage is zero, the drain current is equal to V sub G divided by R sub S, and that's actually this point right over here. You go back to this equation and you make I sub D equal to zero, you get that the gate source voltage is equal to V sub G, which is a positive voltage. So I'm stretching that line out farther so there's a smaller variation by using this extra resistor. 
Let's repeat the last example and now solve for the resistors in our new biasing structure. We had IDSS was four milliamps, the pinch off was minus two, and the power supply was 20 volts. And we put the operating point in the middle of the curve. We'll assume saturation, which is the active region. And let's use the method we used in chapter three for BJTs, where we took a third of the power supply and put it across the transistor, across the two resistors. That would be one third of 20 volts or 6.667 volts. And the R sub D, putting a third of the power supply across it, and the current through it is 2 milliamps. So that would be 3.334K. The nearest standard resistor is 3.3K. The voltage across R sub S is the same, and the current is the same, so we'll get the same value of resistance. Now we had shown on page 32 and 33 that if I sub D Q was 2 milliamps, the gate source voltage was minus 0.586. Let's solve for the voltage across the resistor R2 by going back to the previous page and solving for this voltage. The rise in voltage would equal the drop across here plus the drop across here. Let's go back to 36. And that's this equation right here. So we've got the gate source is minus 0.586 and the voltage across the resistor, R sub S, is 6.667. So we get 6.081 volts. Since the gate current is zero, the current in the resistors can be quite small to create the voltages that we need. If we pick the current too small, we'll get resistors in the megaohm range. So maybe let's limit our current to maybe 10 microamps. That'll give us resistors in the low megaohm range and a couple hundred K range. The voltage across R2 was 6.081, and we're going to put 10 microamps through it. That's 608.1K. The nearest standard resistor is 620K. R1 is between VDD and R2. The difference of those two would be 20 minus 6.081, and we're going to have the same current going through R1 as R2 of 10 microamps. That gives me about 1.392 megaohms. The nearest standard resistor is 1.3 megaohms. Let's analyze that biasing circuit with these values. R1 is 1.3 megaohms, R2 is 620K, and RD and R sub S is 3.3K. We'd solved for K before, it was IDSS over the pinch off squared, and that was one milliamp per volt squared. Our equation in current saturation is K times the quantity gate source minus the pinch off squared. And that's one milli, and that's a minus a minus two. And then our value of the node voltage here is gonna be a voltage divider of 620K with 1.3 meg because there's no current going in here. And that gives me 6.458 volts. So I need another equation with the gate source voltage and the drain current. Let's find the gate source voltage. It's going to be this node voltage minus this node voltage. Now we found this node voltage from the last page to be 6.458 volts. And then this node voltage here is going to be I sub D times R sub S of 3.3K. But I sub D is going to be equal to 1 milli times the gate source minus the pinch off squared. We have a 3.3K resistor, and we have a 1 milli, so that becomes 3.3. If we square this, we'll get the gate source squared times a minus 3.3, inner product times 2 times a minus 3.3, and then 2 squared times a minus 3.3. We got minus 3.3 times the gate source squared. We have the gate source times this term, which turns out to be 13.2. And I've got this term, and I've got this term, and that's a minus 6.742. What is on the other side of the equation, we get a plus 3.3, the gate source squared. 13.2 plus 1 is 14.2, and then this on the other side is a 6.742. We'll set that all equal to 0. Let's divide through by 3.3, make the algebra a little bit easier for finding the roots. Then we have the quadratic equation, so minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a. We get two roots, minus 0.544 and a minus 3.756. But only one of these will work, and that's when we're greater than pinch off. And of course, this is going to put us in the cutoff. This is our value of the gate source voltage, close to what we had with the initial calculations. But again, we're using rounded resistor values. And then let's find the value of I sub D. That's going to be K times the gate source voltage minus the pinch off quantity squared. And that's 2.12. So we're close to our 2 milliamp target. I have to still check that the gate to drain is the right inequality. So again, it's going to be the gate minus the drain. We found the gate voltage to be 6.458, and the drain voltage is going to be the same calculation. If we go from the drain back to ground, we have minus the drain current times the drain resistor, and then plus 20 volts. All of that gives me a minus 6.546, and that is less than minus 2. So we are in the current saturation region. We could use the same technique for an enhancement MOSFET by putting a third of the power supply here, a third here, and a third here. 
And again, I picked the current in here to be very small, but to be something in the microamp range. And this is biasing JFETs and MOSFETs. 